We are on our way to trace the wonder story of the world, as told in the book, the book that has influenced mankind more than any other, the Bible. Continent hopping again, this time to Egypt, with Cairo, its modern capital where imagination takes us back to the pharaohs and to the epic story told in the book of Exodus. Look out, Abdul. You'll be run over by a camel. The Nile of ancient renown, near the banks of which the children of Israel were kept so long in bondage. In the flight of the Israelites from Egypt, their way was right across what we call the Isthmus of Suez, where today we see the Suez Canal, another technological wonder. In Exodus, we read how Moses again and again repeated to Pharaoh the command of the Lord. Pharaoh, let my people go. Beyond Suez, just outside Egypt, we approach the mountain of the Ten Commandments, Mount Sinai. There, the mountain of which the Bible says, and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount. And the Ten Commandments were given. On a lower slope of Mount Sinai, an ancient monastery commemorating Moses and the tablets of the law. For 40 years, Moses led the children of Israel through the mountain desolation of the Sinai Peninsula. Yes, this is the wilderness. We read that Aaron, brother of Moses, was buried on Mount Hor, that summit just below us with the white shrine. The Israelites tarried long at the southern end of the Dead Sea, the lowest spot on earth. In itself, a strange wonder of nature, the Dead Sea, more than a thousand feet below sea level. And then they journeyed on to the promised land. Legend says that there in the heart of Hebron were buried Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, together with their wives, Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah. The cave of Machpelah with the sacred tomb is beneath that building, inside the rectangular enclosure. On to the northern end of the Dead Sea, to Jericho, where the walls fell down. Remember how in the book of Joshua we read, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Along the old Jericho road, recalling how the 12 tribes of Israel won Palestine and established a flourishing kingdom. In the Psalms, the poet sings, If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Three temples of ancient Israel were built here. There they stood through the centuries until the last was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. The ancient Jewish state overthrown. And today, the Mosque of Omar occupies the site of Solomon's Temple. Did you ever hear of the stronghold of Masada? The scene of tragic heroism in the Jewish revolt against Rome. 
the defenders hurling themselves over the cliff, preferring death to surrender. At the bottom, the old Roman wall, dating back to that era of the final effort of ancient Israel for national freedom. The green fields of modern Israel bring the Jewish story right down to date. From ancient tragedy to present revival, Israel restored. Zionist settlers have done wonders in the practice of advanced agriculture. So here today, the color is green. The ancient port of Acre, one of the great gateways to Palestine. After 2,000 years, a Jewish state has been restored in the old land. For ages, the people in exile. And now, a host of exiles returning to build a new nation. Let us tarry a moment. Let us recall another story. A story that begins at Bethlehem. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The Bethlehem of today, with the Church of the Nativity, Lying on north, we come upon Nazareth, where Jesus lived in his youth and worked as a carpenter. A city made immortal by the name that has dominated Christendom for nearly 2,000 years. Jesus of Nazareth. the valley of the Jordan, the river in which the Savior was baptized by John the Baptist. Overlooking the Jordan, the Mount of Temptation, of which we read, and the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them all of which Satan offered to Jesus if he would give up the kingdom of heaven. The Sea of Galilee, where Jesus walked on the water, the sea in which the apostles cast their nets, and the chief of the twelve was Simon, called Peter, a fisherman. The gospel story takes us to the tragic consummation, Gethsemane, outside Jerusalem. Then cometh Jesus with them to a place called Gethsemane, so the gospel relates. The story of the agony in the garden. Into the city through St. Stephen's Gate, where Stephen was stoned. The way pilgrims have come for centuries to pray at the scenes named by tradition. And imagination can picture those events when Jesus was led forth to be crucified. The Via Dolorosa, the way of the cross, named by tradition as the road to Calvary, where the Savior, crowned with thorns, carried his cross. And there followed him, says the Gospel, a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. When they were come to the place which is called Calvary, 
there they crucified him. The story in the minds of the pilgrims as they make this journey along the Via Dolorosa. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, its ancient walls ever in need of repair, legended as the scene of the resurrection. Where at Easter the cry rings out, he is risen, he is risen. And finally, the Mount of Olives, the scene of the ascension.